Good morning. Today I'd like to spend some time going over the social determinants of health. Now specifically, I will introduce to you an ecological model and then illustrate how to use an ecological approach in examining population health. I will also describe a few key concepts from the field of social epidemiology, which is defined as the study of the social distribution of the social determinants of states of health in populations. So in other words, what if any social patterns emerge when we think about how the social determinants are distributed among populations and contribute to population health outcomes? Now I say states of health to specify health broadly as a general state of illness or well-being, including not only mortality, which is what we often think of, but also various morbidities related to quality of life, so how people live on a day-to-day -day basis. Now today we will meet four objectives. By the end of this session, you will understand the history and development of the field of the social determinants of health. You should be able to identify and describe three key concepts relevant to a social epidemiological approach to the study of disease occurrence and classification. Those areas are life course epidemiology, area effects on health, and symphonic causation. Next, you will be able to describe the ecological model of disease causation as well as its utility as a model of population health. And then finally, you will understand the implications and application of these concepts for both public health research and clinical practice. So what is ecological? What do we mean when we say an ecological approach? Well, ecological refers to the branch of science concerned with the interrelationship of organisms in their environments. And so here organisms may refer to individuals as well as groups or populations. So how we act, react, and interact within our environments. And since we're talking about the social determinants of health, we can think in terms of social environments or socio-environmental context. And here the emphasis is really on people in their environments. So it really implies an interaction of people with their broader social environments. Now what I'd like to do now is give you an example to illustrate what is meant by ecological. Again, how we act, react, and interact with our broader social environments. So Emile Durkheim, shown here, was a French sociologist working in the late 19th century and is considered by many as the father of sociology. And his primary aim in his work was to really examine and understand individual pathology as a function of social dynamics or social systems. And he wrote a book called Suicide. And in this book, he really examines how the patterning of one of the most intimate individual and psychological acts, suicide, is based on the patterning of social phenomena. So he really is able to examine and illustrate for us the power of group level social factors in predicting individual level behavior. In this book, Durkheim provides a framework and provides a layout of how to understand the role of group level social factors in predicting both individual and population or group level health outcomes. Now specifically, he was interested in something we call so social integration or social cohesion, which refers to the degree to which one is integrated within their larger social environment or their larger social group. And in looking at the relationship between suicide and social integration, he found that aggregate or group tendencies towards suicide varied with the degree of social integration among the group. So not surprisingly, he found that the more cohesive or integrated the group, the fewer suicides there were. So again, his study was really able to illustrate for us the relationship between the larger social context and both individual and population health outcomes and also behavior patterns. Now when we think about suicide, our tendency is to really think about individual level attributes such as depression, perhaps anxiety states that may be related to some chronic or acute condition, such as child abuse or neglect, the loss of a loved one, etc. But when we think about Durkheim's work, 
we're reminded that it's not only individual level attributes, but also group level social processes which may be predicting population level health outcomes. So we think about social integration, social cohesion. Others might be conforming to group norms. So what is the social pressure involved in conforming to group norms? What are those norms? Do those norms facilitate or are they conducive to healthy behavior patterns or unhealthy behavior patterns? So these are the types of issues we grapple with when we think about the social determinants of health, how people react to and are affected by their social environment. Now the study of how the social environment or social factors or social determinants affect health is not new. Investigations of the social environment and its health effects date back to the early 19th century. Now, I won't go through all of these examples, but I provide them for you here just to illustrate and give you an idea of the scope of the work in this area and to show you that it's not new. Dating back to the early 19th century, we were already looking at the relationship between mortality and poverty, what we consider a social determinant of health. We were dealing with issues around overcrowding, housing, and nutritional deprivation as leading to this kind of general susceptibility to infectious disease. We were dealing with issues around sanitation and hygiene in terms of predictors of population health. So again, this is not a new field. At this time, it was considered the field of social medicine. And we were really still working predominantly from a biomedical paradigm but really just starting to insert and think about the role of the social determinants of health and how social factors contribute to population health outcomes. Now what I'd like to do now is spend some time on two specific examples of more recent work, both of which have had significant impacts on public health as we know it today. The first is the Black Report. Now, the Black Report was a report commissioned by the Queen of England in the early 80s. And the purpose of the report and the purpose of the study was to examine health disparities or inequalities in health in that region. Now, the Black Report really reinvigorated interest in the social determinants of health. There was a lot of work going on back in the early 19th century around the social determinants of health, but we were still really working from a biomedical paradigm. So when the Black Report came out, it really reinvigorated that interest and, and really caused an upstir in terms of attention paid to the social determinants of health and the implications of those determinants for population health outcomes. And it called for a social model of health. So shifting from a biomedical paradigm to more of a biopsychosocial approach where we're really starting to think about the interaction of all of these factors, including not only biomedicine or individual biological patterns, but also behavior, the social environment, and other aspects of the environment, the physical environment, the chemical environment, the built environment. So it's really dealing with understanding and appreciating the interaction of all of these factors and the complexities of that interaction and how they contribute to population health outcomes. So again, the Black Report called for a paradigm shift, and the importance of this report was that it examined and explained health disparities and how they were based on the patterning of socioeconomic status or how health disparities were patterned based on socioeconomic status. And it not only discussed the disparities and identified social factors, but it also provided policy recommendations that dealt with how can we start to alleviate some of these issues. And what was really revolutionary about this report was that it didn't call for changes or policy recommendations that would affect health directly per se, but it called for attention to 